Orbital decompression is an operation or a series of operations where we effectively increase the space available for the tissues of the eye socket and we tend to particularly use it for treatment of patients with thyroid eye disease or a subgroup of these patients. With thyroid eye disease you effectively have too much tissue for the restricted space of the bony orbit. The bony orbit has four walls and you can treat the excess tissue either by removing some of the tissue like too much ice cream in the ice cream cone or else you can expand the cone and we tend here to use bone decompression where we remove some of the walls of the eye socket create more space to allow the tissues to settle back into the orbit the number of walls you remove varies between one to uh, up to three dependent on how severe the excess of tissue is, how far forward the eyes are, and also the reason for doing it. In most cases with orbital decompression we will do it when the disease process is relatively quiet. So it's for rehabilitation, for making the patient look better, more comfortable, less prominent eyes. But occasionally we're forced to do it rather earlier in the disease. For example, if the eyesight is failing due to the pressure within the socket, we create more space uh, and we may do that whilst the disease is still quite active. And uh, as I say, we grade the amount that we do. The approach to the surgery varies according to the number of walls you want to decompress. The commonest will be to create windows in the outer walls of the socket, which gives a moderate amount of decompression and we base the incision in a small incision in the outer angle about a centimetre, half an inch long and it hi hides itself extremely well because it falls into the natural smile lines at the outer angle. really is a fantastic approach. Very rarely will you see the incision after a couple of months it'll have faded in. Occasionally we also use a different incision which doesn't involve skin at all and it's just based at the inner angle where we can reach the inner wall of the socket and part of the floor. Uh, and so whatever approach we use, we use very well hidden incisions. It tends to be a highly successful operation if one does the right procedure. And so now we tend to tailor the number of walls we do according to the severity. Sometimes we will deliberately avoid doing too many walls at first because originally we had some cases where we had over decompression, the eye became slightly too sunken and now rather than have that we'll tend to do one wall first, the outer wall and if one later decides you need to do the inner wall it's not a major problem because the inner angle incision is so easy and you can just so you can grade the amount and the results tend to be extremely good with a very low complication rate. And how long does surgery last? In general, one is talking about about an hour on each side for the surgery plus the anaesthetic time. And in practical terms, from the patient's point of view, they should think about it as a few hours surgery, one night in hospital generally afterwards, and uh, then you have the sort of post-operative effects such as swelling, occasionally double vision, and things like that which naturally impair your things you do. But in real terms it's one day out of circulation for the person. And can both eyes be operated on at the same time? We did, used to do one side at a time but then patients said I want, can I not get it over and done with? And typically now if patient requires two sides done we'll happily do it. We know that the instance of visual loss, which would probably be the one reason for doing one eye at a time, is so low that patients say, no please, I prefer one anaesthetic, have it done, get back to my life that you know has been put on hold by the thyroid eye disease. So typically we'll do two sides, uh, but if the patient says, no, I really either don't want to be padded on both sides because of claustrophobia or something like that, then we'll happily do one side and schedule the second side maybe a week or two later. You know, so we very much listen to what the patient would like. It is, it is major surgery and most are not significant risks that will lead to a long-term problem. 
Um, let's say side effects typically are swelling. Infection is very rare, uh, but could occur with any type of surgery, but really is very rare. It's less than 1%. The, some complications would be irreversible. For example, if you lose vision. Now, it's very hard to estimate the risk of visual loss. Uh, we know that it's certainly less than one in 3,000 for a given eye. And therefore, if you're doing two eyes, the chances of it occurring would be less than about one in 10 million for it to occur in two eyes. We've never known it happen, but that's an estimated risk. It's certainly very, very low. Most other things, for probably one of the most awkward things is double vision. In most cases, that will be transient and it's just due to a bit of swelling in the same way if you twisted your ankle, it'd be stiff and not working very well. Doing surgery on the eye socket, the tissues get slightly swollen, stiff, and so you tend to get a little bit of double vision, particularly on extremes of gaze. Most people that will settle down fairly quickly within days or weeks. But some people will have had double vision before, and that may be slightly more troublesome, or might develop vision, uh, double vision after the surgery. And again, that might require something done about it, either prisms fitted in the glasses to help them function. Occasionally, if it's very troublesome, the double vision might blur out one lens on the glasses to allow them to run around until it's stable, and occasionally require squint surgery but it is a minority of people who will finally require something done about double vision. Other complications or effects, some people may get a little bit of numbness, particularly of the cheek, because the nerve that gives feeling to the cheek, not movement, it doesn't affect movement, it's purely sensation to the cheek and the upper teeth. Uh, that nerve goes across the floor of the eye socket and if you decompress the floor, the nerve often will say, what's happened? and stop working for a while but typically that picks up in about over 95 percent of cases but a few people will get permanent difference in sensation not movement uh, and other complications are very rare occasionally you get sinusitis in the early days but that's rare and last of all without a wall decompression you occasionally get a very slight wobble of the image maybe only about one to two percent of patients when they chew vigorously because the muscle used with chewing sits next to that outer wall and so if they really chew hard they, they might notice a slight wobble very hard for you to see as an outsider but they just perceive a very slight wobble doesn't tend to trouble them but they report it and say I thought the wine was too strong when they're having a, a pleasant dinner